day two float and volume over on our 2023 boot camp. Let's discuss it because flow and volume is absolutely huge when it comes to stock trading and they go hand in hand. This is brother and sister. This is peanut butter and jelly flow and volume is what you must be a master of master of knowing how to find it master of knowing what is good volume what is good float what is float what is volume so let's break these two down let's understand them what they are apart and how they work together so first thing that we're going to discuss is going to be float now you have probably heard me say this or heard ak-47 say this a million times in chat floating stock is the number of shares available for trading of a particular stock Floating stock is calculated by subtracting closely held shares and restricted stock from a firm's total outstanding shares. Closely held shares are those owned by insiders, major shareholders, and employees. Restricted stock refers to insider shares that cannot be traded because of temporary restriction, such as the lockup period after initial public offering. Now, I know this sounds confusing. The easy definition, I'm always going to give you the Deckmar Trades definition, is float is what is available to the public we are going to be having different types of shares out there. We're gonna have restricted shares that we cannot touch, which only ownership of the company can actually touch. But the float is going to be whatever the public, you, I, whoever wants to trade, that's how many shares are available for us to be able to buy. Now this number is extremely important. And why is that? Well, because imagine if a ton of people want to buy up a stock. Well, if we only have a certain amount of shares available, well, we need to understand simple supply and demand. If we have a certain amount of shares available, and let's say it's a very small amount, if a lot of people buy this stock, those shares are going to increase in price. If we have a large amount of shares, well, guess what's going to happen? We buy that stock, the price doesn't increase that often. So really what it comes down to is stocks with lower floats are going to have less shares available to trade. So what this means is if a lot of people end up buying those shares, that stock's price is going to increase dramatically. If we have a large amount of shares available to the public, if I buy a stock and you buy a stock, it doesn't change it whatsoever because there's so many shares available. But if let's say it's very little and we all buy a stock, that price could increase dramatically because now there's only a few left. Now also, whenever I sell mine, I know that other people want to buy it so I can place my price higher and someone most likely is going to take that price. The easiest way to think about float is we can think about it almost as the housing market. If we have, let's say 100 people, we have a huge mob of people that all want to live inside this certain neighborhood. Everyone wants to live inside this certain neighborhood. It's a very nice neighborhood, gated neighborhood. You, you got the best schools, everything. Great pool. But guess what? There's only two houses for sale. And we have hundreds of people. What happens? These hundreds of people are going to try to outbid each other. They're going to say, I'll give you 300000 400,000, 1 million, 2.9 million, 5 million, 10 million, I buy it for 20 million. Because we have all this demand and we have a very little supply. So this house right here goes for 2 million. Now let's say what happens. What if they all of a sudden knock down the fence, they add let's say 1,000 acres and a construction company builds 1,000 new houses. Well, guess what? There's only 100 people who want a house. Now there's a thousand houses. If someone says, hey, I'll sell you my house for $2 million. Someone says, this house is available for 100,000. I'm just gonna go here, which is now going to bring down this price, right? When there's a larger supply and not as crazy as a demand, well, guess what? Those prices are going to decrease. What's the only way to make these houses $2 million? Well, we're gonna need a ton of people a 2 million plus people to make this house expensive again, $2 million plus. So when you have something that's rare, something that's rare, it's going to be higher value. When you have something that everyone can have, well, guess what? It's not high value. There's a difference between a diamond and gravel on the street. A diamond, how often do you go outside and you find a diamond? Not very often. You usually have to buy a diamond from a store because they're very rare. Same exact thing with gold. Well, you know what? You can just say to yourself, gravel is everywhere. Gravel you could pick on up, diamonds are rare. Same exact thing with float, okay? We always wanna be looking for the rare floats. So the float here is floating stock is the outstanding shares minus those that are restricted. So it's what's available for us. 
Floating stock will change over time as new shares may be issued. Shares may be bought back or insiders, major shareholders buy or sell the stock. Low float stocks tend to have higher spreads and higher volatility. That's what we want right there. than a comparable larger float stock. So the easiest way to think about this, and I've said this before in examples, is imagine it is Christmas Eve and you promised little Timmy an Xbox. You looked at him and you said, if you get all A's, I'm going to buy you an Xbox. Daddy's gonna get you an Xbox. And it came to Christmas Eve and you forgot to go get him an Xbox. You just got caught up at work, things you know going on. You just, got, you just completely forgot. So now it's Christmas Eve, you go into Best Buy and you know what? There's tons of Xboxes available. And you just walk in, you see your neighbor, you say, hey, Mr. Johnson, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, how are you, I'm doing great. It's nice and easy because there's tons of Xboxes available. But let's reverse this situation. Imagine if there was only one Xbox available and not only did you forget little Timmy, but Mr. Johansson forgot it for, you know, uh, little Scotty. And then same with another parent and another parent and another parent and another parent. This attitude of saying, hey, how you doing? Nice, calm, cool, and collective turns into this attitude where it's everyone get out of my way. I need to get an Xbox right now. This is going to be nuts. This is going to be crazy. Basically nuts Black Friday type of deals. So if we have a hundred people fighting for one Xbox, the whole entire environment drastically changes. So flow and volume comes down to supply and demand. The lower the supply, the higher the demand, the increase in price. The lower the demand, the lower the price is going to be because people don't need it, especially when you have a large supply of something. So let's go over towards volume now, because I'm pretty sure you guys understand how float is working. Now volume, volume is the number of shares or contracts traded in a security or an entire market during a given period of time. For every buyer, there is a seller and each transaction contributes to the total count of volume. That is when buyers and sellers agree to make a transaction at a certain price. It is considered one transaction. If only five transactions occur in the day, the volume for the day is five. So let's talk about all the different ways that we can see volume, right? We can see volume underneath a chart. If I wanna go ahead and look at a chart right here, I could say to myself, S&P 500, one minute time frame. And if you guys take a look, we actually got a nice little drop right now on the S&P 500. You can see where there is big buying volume and we could also see where there's big selling volume. We could see big volume in the candle bars. Anything that's in the green obviously is buying. Everything that's in the red is obviously selling. So you could see when we have this very big sell-off, we have red, 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 and we have a lot of sellers when we have these very large red. So that is one way to look at volume. Now, I'll be honest, I rarely slash never look at the bottom of the graph. I don't use this. So where do I like to look at volume? Personally, I look at volume on the lesson that we looked at yesterday, which is on the level two. Remember, we only want to trade stocks that are volatile. And what I mean by volatile is I mean quick moving. If I take a look over on the S&P 500 right now, the S&P 500 always has decent volume, but it definitely has a lot of volume right now because we just got a nice crack. Take a look at how fast this level two is moving. The level two has constant orders going through the time and sales. People are buying and selling all over the world right now. Momentum bar is moving. We are constantly having this level two jump up and down. It looks like it's dancing. There's a lot of action. There's a lot of activity. There's a lot of hype. And then I could go ahead and type in another play. Let's go ahead and type in GSMG. Let's look at the difference here. GSMG. There's no volume whatsoever. Remember, volume is how many people are trading the stock. There's how many transactions. The easy way to think about it, this is not the correct definition, but this is the way that I think about it. Volume is going to be how many people are interested in the play. When I see a play, such as the S&P 500, and I see constant movement, constant activity, momentum bar flying, I know that people are trading the S&P 500. People have interest in the S&P 500. People are currently buying and selling the S&P 500. When I say to myself, hmm, guys, should I buy ASNS right now? Should I buy ASNS? Well, let me see. ASNS, type it down on the level two. No one else is trading it. So if no one else is trading ASNS, why in the world would I want to trade ASNS? I'm going to jump in on it and then I'm just going to be sitting there. No one else is buying it. 
what's the point of you buying it? So what the magic is buy a stock that has a little bit of volume that you expect is going to have big volume, or if you're late to the party and just trying to get a scout play or short, we are going to be trading stocks that we already know has good volume or has good hype. You know, so for instance, like SFWL. SFWL traders has been a stock that has gone from $5 up to $12. SFWL, does this stock have good volume? Absolutely. The stock went from $5 to $12. It spiked to over 110% today. There's a lot of movement right here. There's a lot of action right here. There's a lot of trading right now. So it's a play that I know that I would probably want to be looking at because there is good volume. So volume is a massive indicator. Now you can see right here, total volume, 3.9 million. Let me ask you guys a question. Is 3.9 million shares a lot? Is that good volume? Well, if I take a look over on the S&P 500, it has 14 million shares traded. Is 14 million shares traded a lot? The answer is, well, it all depends. And you might say, well, that's not a good answer. It is. It all depends on what its average is. So for instance, if you wanna say to yourself, okay, SFWL, is this considered a very hot play today? Well, I can take a look that the level two is moving very fast. I can already see it had a monster spike, but we can also even gain more clarity if I type in SFWL by saying to myself, on a normal day, on a normal day, SFWL usually brings in average volume, 362,000 shares traded. That's normal, 362,000 shares traded. But today, we're at 4 million. So you're telling me today, we are way above our average. We usually have 362,000, let's just think about it, as people looking at this play. Today we have 4 million people looking at this play. Another easy example or analogy, I'm just trying to get something that sticks with you guys. Imagine if SFWL was a restaurant, and imagine this was a burger joint, okay? On a normal day, we had 362,000 people come through, which obviously is crazy amounts. But just imagine that, that's a normal day. So guess what happens on a normal day? The hostess knows how busy it's gonna be. The chefs are ready. The chefs make a normal set of burgers. They have the normal set of fries. The waitresses know that it's busy, but they kind of have a routine. Now, what if out of nowhere, they get 4 million people? Well, there's an hour and a half long wait. The, the hostess is running around, the bus boy is going crazy. Back in the kitchen, they're going absolutely nuts, trying to defrost burgers, cooking as much as they can, doing dishes, doing everything they possibly can here. It's crazy. And why is it crazy? Because it's what is unexpected. They're not used to this much volume. They're not used to this much attention. SFWL is not used to this much attention, which is why it goes on a monster spike here. So FWL goes on this crazy play rip and run because it has high volume. And also what's the last thing we need to kind of put together is because this stock is having a very low float. When we take a look now, we want to start putting this magic solution together. Volume and float. SFWL, we click statistics here and we scroll on down. You can see underneath share statistics, we have float. This says NA. NA stands for not available. If this ever comes up where you see not available, you can use another website, www.floatchecker.com. So we can go over to Float Checker and we can see if we can get some information over on SFWL. Now, the reason why it's saying NA is because it's a newer play. It's a newer stock. It has only been available for about a month and a half now. So let's see what we have here. SFWL. We go ahead, we check this on out, and we can see Yahoo Finance had not available. Finviz has 6 million in float. TD Ameritrade has 6 million in float. Wall Street Journal, 7 million in float. And Morningstar, 32 million in float. You could see that we are a lower float play. 32 million, I would probably say that one's incorrect. That's why I always like to look at a few different sources to get the best idea. We can also see it's moving as a low float play. Now, if anyone's saying, well, Deck, what's the float that we always like to look for? The magic secret right here, in case anyone does not know, is if anything is over the price, I'm gonna say 25 million. If we are over 25 million, I usually don't give it that much attention. If I'm looking for a day trade, like a micro cap play where we're talking about six, seven, $10 stocks, 12, $15 stocks, $2 stocks. I usually don't pay too much attention at around 25 million. I like to look for personally is going to be stocks that are more at around that 10 million area. 10 million is where we start having considered lower floats. 
So 10 million, we'll give that a check mark. That's going to be lower floats. Now, what it comes on down to is the lower the float, the better. So what we'd have here now is anything under 5 million in float. Under 5 million in float is where we have the best chance of going on a monster spike and a monster rip. So if you take a look at Tesla or Apple, they're gonna have 100 millions in float. We're not talking about Tesla and Apple and such. We're talking about stocks like SFWL, which is 7 million in float and went all the way from what price? Went from $4 and spiked all the way up to $12. You guys wanna see something really crazy here? We have seen a ton of breakouts over the last few weeks. Let's just kind of run through them and let's see you know, the attention that they had and let's go ahead and take a look at some of these floats that we have. First one that we had was TOP. You guys probably remember TOP. TOP went all the way from the price of $17 all the way up to $200. And $56. TOP, this play is definitely losing its attention and losing its hype right now. You can see its volume is very low today. It doesn't have that much attention because it already had its spike. And remember, when a stock has very low volume, it's usually a little bit of a fader because not many people are touching it. So that's why it's down 10%. But we could see that TOP, this float, bada boom, 5 million in float. Let's take a look over on BAOS. BAOS, saying, Deck, what happened here? BAOS went all the way from the price of $4 and spiked all the way up to $23. As you guys can probably imagine, what do we have here? We have a stock that not right now doesn't have much volume. Usually we have 147,000 shares right now we're at 19,000. Remember when a stock has low volume, it has low attention. Usually it leads to people selling it on off. We take a look at statistics. The float is underneath 1 million shares, underneath 1 million shares right here. So that's, you know, amazing. Because basically, when you have a lot of volume, everyone's fighting for less than 1 million shares available, which leads to price increasing dramatically. And I'm just gonna show you guys some other examples right here. It comes on down to ASNS. ASNS, monster spike, monster dump, monster spike, monster dump. We can also take a look over on GDC. GDC went all the way from $3, spiked all the way up to $44. Take a wild guess on what we have here. If I had to take a guess on today, I'm gonna to say GDC does not have much volume. We can see it doesn't have much volume. Most likely it's going to be slightly red and have an extremely low float because we had this monster spike in the past. So if we take a look, we could see that GDC, when it does not have much attention and we have lower volume, you have volume 340,000. On a normal day, we have 796,000, most likely going to be in the red because we don't have that much attention but the reason why we had that monster spike is because we have a under 1 million in float stock and having under 1 million in float that's bringing in a ton of attention a ton of hype and traders are saying to themselves wow this thing can go absolutely crazy so the magic secret i want every single person to start understanding is float and volume are going to be working together almost like supply and demand so that is going to be crucial. Let's get back into this because what I want you to really gauge here is volume equals activity and activity equals profit. More volume we have, the more active a stock is going to be, which means most likely the better chance it has of going up. The stocks that go on up are going to have great profit. So we always have to be playing stocks that have movement, but the better equation that you actually want to write down would be low float plus high volume equals massive spikes. So the stocks that have the lowest floats, such as under 1 million, like GDC, or if you wanna take a look at ASNS, or BAOS, and the ones that get triple, quadruple, quintuple, their, their volume on the day, those are the ones that obviously have attention. Now, Deck, why do those get attention? Well, it could be for multiple different reasons. It could be because that's a hot sector at this time. Could be because it came out with a hot press release at this time. Could be because of a chart setup at the time. There could be many reasons, but I want you guys to start gauging and understanding that. So here's an example, BPTH monster spike goes all the way from $2 to $83. Take a look at what the float is right here, guys. Float is only 2 million in float. So float is extremely important. And as we know, how much is the perfect number of volume? Well, to be honest with you guys and to be straightforward with every single person, there is no perfect magic number. Remember, you need to compare the average volume to the current volume on the day. There is no magic number. It's about comparing the average volume to the current volume. That's how we are going to be able to get an understanding of what volume is or how hot a certain play is. So every single morning when I wake on up, I never play a stock. Sometimes people get you know so caught up on their favorite chart pattern. 
If there's no volume, don't trade it. Oh, deck, I love this chart pattern and it has volume. Well, what's the float? The float is, you know, 38 million, too big in float. I'm not going to trade it. So what I like to do a lot of times, especially when I'm doing research is I might go on over towards, let's say www.finviz.com. I go to finviz.com right here. And just from this, I can start putting together maybe a few stocks that I really like. I can click screener at this time. Let's go to all together. And let's say I want to go with stocks that are going up today. Okay. Look at this. Look how crazy this is already. We have 8,255 stocks. We have 8,255 stocks. Already, I go with today up. Boom, let's take away 6,000 plays. We got 2,720 plays. All right, absolutely awesome. Let's go to float. I wanna see anything under 20 million. Okay, boom. Let's take away another 2,000 plays. We got 734 left. Remember, we are just trying to put the odds in our favor. Why be able to say, okay, I'm gonna reach my hand in the jar of 8,000 different you know, plays and I'm gonna pick out the winner. Well, we're trying to limit how many marbles are in that jar here. So now we only got 734 plays. We have stocks that are going up, stocks that are under 20 million in float, and let's also say stocks that are what? Relative volume, relative volume. I don't really care about the average volume too much. Sometimes I might because stocks that have very low average volumes, when you do have big volume, it goes on crazy climbs. So for instance, if we have a stock that only has a volume of two, what do you think would happen if we ever had 100 million people go into that flight? It would be chaotic, right? When you have stocks that have very, very, very low volume on average and then bring in a ton of volume, that's where you usually see the biggest spikes. And kind of today, you know, a great example would probably be SFWL. SFWL, what's the average volume on this play? Can't be that much. The average volume it has is what? 362,000. Now it's at 4.9, almost 5 million. That's a big difference. But I mean, I've even seen lower. I've seen an average stock with 70,000 and it brings in 22 million stocks that go on $200 climbs. So if you wanted to, let's say, go ahead and add low volume, you definitely could. I'm going to skip that for now. But what I like to do a lot of times is look at relative volume. So the relative volume shows us today, it's going to give us the average of the last three month and now tell us, okay, are we two times its average volume? Is it three times its average volume today? Is it 10 times its average volume today? So let's just take a look at some of these plays. Okay, let's take a look at some of these plays right now. We have performance today up, stocks that have 10 times its average volume over the last three months and float under 20 million. And let's look at our options. Number one option we have, is CLRO. Did anyone else know that CLRO was also the number one top gainer in the stock market today? Hey, we just found it right here. Let's see what another option is. We also have MOBQ at this time. MOBQ, that's pretty interesting. You know why? MOBQ is popping up on the high of the day momentum scanner right now, has 286 new high of the days. MOBQ at this time, we type it on in, MOBQ. This stock is currently up 103%. Big spike, big move at this time. Well, guess what? You can go ahead and you can see this over on finviz.com. What else do we have? Here's SFWL, the one that we've talked about a lot already. We go ahead and take a look, SFWL, and this play obviously has been a nice money maker for a lot of us. For anyone that was not here this morning, SFWL was my trade today. SFWL made $2,672 because I shorted this play. I jumped in on this play, short side, short side, short side, short side, short size, and then I got out of it to get out of a short. You buy the shares on back. I was able to make $2,600 because I'm trading stocks that are being the most active. So there's that right here. Let's see what else we have on this slide. We have TCRX. Does anyone remember TCRX? TCRX. This is the number one top gainer of the day today. You can see penny stock top gainers, top losers, 134% and TCRX going on this nice move. So if you are ever late to the day, you're ever late to the party and you're saying, okay, I just want to find the best plays of the day. Now you know how float and volume are going to make the best plays. It's almost like the easiest recipe. If we are baking a cake here, instead of having a ton of different ingredients to have that perfect cake, you need just what? Boom, low float, and you need boom, big volume. Low float, big volume, ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna have probably the best plays of the day. You can also reverse this if you wanted to. Today down, and if we have low float and big volume, these are probably the ones that are getting crushed for some reason or another. So these are ones that probably have very big red days that are going to lead towards big sell-offs here. So if we take a look, let's take a look over on some of these. Let's go TRVN, TRVN. 
This is a low float, big volume. Has a massive dump today. Makes sense. We have SLRX. SLRX, low float, big volume. Had a morning spike, but then had a big time dump on off today. So you could see how this gives us the magic formula. It just comes on down to low float, big volume. And if you want to go today up, that's vanilla. If you want to go today down, that's chocolate for your chocolate cake. But a lot of people don't realize how easy some of this is. I know a lot of traders, they're running around looking for these answers that are right in front of your face. So I want to give you all these answers. I want everyone to be able to understand how these plays move and what to look for in these trades. If anyone has any questions, comments, or concerns, as always, you guys can hit me on up. But we are wrapping up right here, day two, with float, volume, what they are, how they work, how they come together to make sure that you are becoming the best trader you can be.